Hi all, so I'm out uh, finishing up Jeep's hammock, the camo DIY hammock that I made for uh, Urban Country Homestead and one of the uh, things, so so far I've uh, made the hammock and made the end loops that will tie to the whoopee slings. I've made the whoopee slings and I can put the little cards in the, uh, right here, somewhere around here, the little cards to show you how to do that. Uh, the next stage is the tree huggers. And the tree huggers, I do it a real simple way with um, a Marlin Spike Hitch. And one of the things that I use, um, and I just went and picked this up at REI the other day, and this is a nylon, the, the nylon webbing from REI. And I have, or I had personally last year, I had gone to Walmart, because everybody's saying, go to Walmart, their stuff's great, you know, buy these strapping hitch things or you know for your truck and, and cut off the end and, and so I did that and it lasted it lasted me probably a good six months but each time I could tell it was getting worn it was getting snagged it was getting you know to a point where I just wasn't trusting it anymore and it wasn't long enough at the same time Jaylene had her uh, straps that I got from REI and they are showing no 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 sign of anywhere at all so that's what I'm making for Jeep. Um, that's because I just do not want, um, you know, I have fallen in, in my hammock uh, flat on my back. And, you know, if you're, if you're just going out, you know, and you're setting up a hammock for the day, you know, at a picnic site or car camping, you know, sure, a lot of this, a lot of this cheaper stuff is fine. But if you're really relying on it to sleep all night, you're going for a few days, you want to minimize the field repair that you're going to have to do. Plus, you just don't want to land on your back. What if it's raining and there's mud, you know? So I got 30 feet of this one-inch strap, one-inch webbing. And you get it at REI, and it's uh, it's used for um, for climbing or whatever. So I fold it in half, so each one will be roughly 15 feet long. Once from uh, Walmart, they're 10. And I need a lot more than that up here in the Northwest. Um, so, see how sharp my EDC is. That's good. I cut it and then I'll go ahead and, and burn the ends. But you really, you know, I think there's a difference between just day hiking or uh, you know, at, at the camp, and what you're really going to rely on, and there are two different types of of uh, hammocks, in my opinion. Um, there's nothing wrong with either one, and if, if all you're doing is hanging out, uh, you know, go ahead, go ahead and get a cheap one. And this actually isn't really cheap. This strapping, all this 30 feet, cost me seven dollars, seven bucks. I know the ones that. Uh, at Walmart that I got, I think they were still like $4.98, so five bucks. So for two dollars more, I've got more. I've got something that I can rely on, and uh, I just think you know it's all really cool and everything. But I mean, this is your head you're talking about. It is in this case Jeep's head. So what I do is just fold over the end like that, make a loop, pull it through, tighten her down, and that's it. So I'll show you how I do the Marlin Spike Hitch. All right, just so uh, you can get a good shot of uh, my hammock lab that I've got set up where I test everything. And on that end, I don't need to put a, a, a tree hugger. It's all set up. But over here on my other tr on my tree, which looks just like a telephone pole, uh, this is where I do my, my, tree hugger, my tree hugger work. So... The beauty of, the, of, of all the hammock stuff that I like to make is really no metal in it at all. Um, I really, there's not, it's not necessary to have any metal um, in it at all. So when you make a Marlin spike hitch, all you need is a little stick, you know, about the size of your finger. So we'll take the loop end of the tree hugger.
and you just take this end, put it through. And now it's fixed to the tree. Now for the Marlin spike hitch, take your webbing, you loop it on itself, you flip it up forward like that so you have a loop coming through. Take your little toggle, stick it through it, tighten it down. That's your toggle for hanging your hammock on. It's really simple. To get it undone, pull that out and you got it out. So take a loop, take a loop, put it up high, bring another loop through that loop, put your stick in, tighten it down. That's it. Here's the other, the other uh, strap. You know, and this is just so if you get really used to this, if you do have to make field repairs, that's how easy it is. So it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, also, you know, this, this really allows for a lot more flexibility. So I know a lot of hammocks come with the little ropes and things like that. I can't use them. The, the trees are too small around here. And to get the right sag and all that, you've got to be able to have the adjustability. I know a lot of people don't care about sag, but really, if you're going to sleep, if you're really going to sleep, you want to be able to control your sag. And, you know, really, I learned all my stuff, so don't take my word for it. I learned all my stuff from uh, hammock forums. Uh, there's thousands of guys on there that really know what they're doing. Suge Emery, um, Franke, in fact I'm going to be doing his bug net. Uh, there's a ton of people, Dutch, uh, who makes Dutch clips. Watch those guys. They know what they're doing and that's where I learned it. They don't sleep like a banana. They sleep on a diagonal lay. They sleep with a fixed ridge line. They sleep with, with proper sag. You know, so and those guys, in my opinion, are the pros. Um, you know, so don't, if you go out, you're gonna get real disappointed if you just kind of throw it up and try and sleep in it like a banana. Um, you know, that also goes for things like putting a, a sleep mat as your insulated, insulation value. If you're sleeping in a diagonal lay, it's gonna be really difficult to get that sleep mat to stay in one spot. So, you know, that's where having a two, a two layer hammock you know, I kind of question that one too. You know, so under blanket, you know, if you're really going to get into sleeping in it, get an under blanket or an under quilt or whatever you want to call it. Um, everybody that is the serious hammockers, like Shug Emery, who's probably the godfather of hammocks, has an under quilt. Um, you name the guys that are really serious hammocks, hammock hangers, they all have under quilts. They all have a, a ridge line. They all have sag. So and they all sleep on a diagonal. All right, let's go get the hammock. So here we have the end of the whoopee sling. We put that, so here's your Marlin spike hitch and there's a, a loop on the top. Put your Marlin spike hitch over the top of this knot, not down on the stick, so not like that. Bring it up over the knot, so the force is on the knot. Okay, so there's the hammock. So I'm gonna go uh, go adjust it up a little bit. So just take the end of this whoopee sling, pull, and it constricts on itself. Now that right there, you want about a 30 degree angle if you're just gonna go with a hammock without a bug net on it. Uh, you want about a 30 degree angle coming off of the tree. So it's actually a little bit more, that's a little bit higher than that. But you know, if you're just gonna, gonna lay it out for a day, uh, that's, that's plenty good. So let's give it a try.
that feels great. Real nice fabric. Love that fabric. Now the key here, you know, that's just fine for, you know, just hanging around the camp and everything like that. But I have bugs. I don't know if anybody else has bugs. Uh, you know, I think it's real, you know, you, you need to have a bug net. So the next thing I'm going to do is a bug net. And to make a bug net real easy, it's great to have a ridge line so the bug net can, can hang over it. So the, the ridge line will go right here. The bug net will go over the top of it. So to get a proper ridge line, you want a ridge line that's about 83 or 85 percent as long as a hammock. So I'm going to measure out how long it is from here to the end of that loop and come up with a ridge line system. Okay, so now I've got the hammock set at 128 inches, and so I need to make the ridge line 80, like 83, 85 percent of that. So that would be anywhere from like 107 to 109 inches. So, measure that out. Seventeen. Tighten it up. Tighten it up a little bit more. All right. So the hammock was 100, is set at 128 inches right now. That's adjustable, um, as I showed in another video. And so to make the ridge line where to start, we want it about 108 inches long up here, about 108 inches long up there, and that creates the sag that you want in a hammock. So this is done with am steel again. It's like a big whippy sling. So now let's give it a try. A little low. That's real comfortable. I've got my feet on this side and my head's on the other side, and it's just extremely, extremely comfortable. You can even lie my feet on the other side. So even if I want to sleep on my side, I can sleep on my side real easy with the hammock set up this way. So I can roll all around in here. You know, and that's what that's what giving you so when you get a good sag going uh, in a right hammock, you can do a ton with it. And now I've got a ridge line so I can hang stuff on this too. What I can also hang is the bug net. So let's go make the bug net. All right, so now it's uh, to the bug netting, and uh, this is uh, how a guy named Franke, and I'll put the little card fly out uh, to his video on, on uh, how he did it. So I'm going to do it the same way. So I got this same uh, no seam. this is real no seam. Um, I think there's some other products that people use that's just more like sheer or something like that. Uh, I just like to use the real no seam. It's a smaller weave. Uh, the little, little, little tiny bugs aren't going to get in. Only costs a little bit more, so why not? Uh, I think it's more durable. So, 
There is the old family room. And now I'm going to need about 12 feet um, of it so I can, of course, uh, do hemming and all that. So I'm going to need two pieces that are 12 feet long and they are five feet, just like a regular fabric bolt. Um, then I'll start sewing them together. This is also a real super simple uh, part of it. I got this uh, this fat, this uh, no seam netting off of uh, Ripstop by the Roll, which is where I get pretty much all my stuff, except for some of my smaller things, which I get from um, either old equipment. I'll, I'll uh, scavenge off old equipment, things like little line locks and stuff like that. Um, but things like uh, like the bungee cord or the, the shock cord that I'll be using. I actually got this shock cord from REI, but you can get it from other places. So I'm gonna overlay another um, piece 12 feet long. So that'll give me little ends you'll see on the ends of where the ridge line and the whoopee slings come together, or that'll be. Um, and then hemming it in, uh, the hammock right now uh, with the ridge line on is about nine, nine and a half feet long. So this will give me some room on the ends. And plus, if, if, if you want to make the hammock longer or you move your whoopee slings in and out to change your sag, it'll give you a little bit of room. So I'll get, uh, get this cut out and then we'll sew them together. Put the two 12 foot pieces together and I'm going to sew on one side, the long side, um, to sew them together. Wrong stitch. <laughs> okay, there you are. Um, zigzag. Just need a straight stitch. And uh, now you don't have to worry about how far apart your stitch length is on this stuff. In fact, you want them fairly close together. Um, if you want the two, you want to sew this mesh together. So I just uh, line them up and let her rip. Alright, so this other end here, that's where I just sewed the long end. And now what we're going to do is, is sew a diagonal like that. And the Franke did, uh, recommends it's 20% 20, 20 of your length. So this is 12 feet long, it's 20%, it's 2 feet. And so that's right, right there. Um, this is where you know, it does make sense to kind of uh, pin things together because uh, you got a long diagonal so you're going to do so this is uh, just uh, Taylor's chalk just doing a line on there Now I'm going, I am going to pin this now, um, just because it, it's, it's a real long one, it's hard to eyeball a diagonal. Um, so we'll just, uh, just pin it, and then we'll sew it. I mean, this still doesn't have to be that exact. Uh, you'll see, once I put it up, it's all cr kind of crumbled and crunched, and you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like a, like a fine suit. I mean, it's, it's going to be bunched up um, and you're not going to you have to rely on just total accuracy so we don't get too hung up on this. I've free sewn it uh, and it looks fine. So, But um, if you've got that kind of chalk which I recommend if anybody's getting into making your own equipment it's a great little tool to have. That and a rolling cutting wheel. All right, and uh, so now I'll go sew that. Well, now on the diagonal, now this is the, the top, the long sew that we did, where you put the two together. So this is actually going to be the top that's hanging over the ridge line. And now here is the diagonal. What you want to do is you want to leave a little bit of space right here, because that's where your ridge, where your ridge line is going to go through. And if you leave about four inches, um, then 
you can actually kind of pull your hammock through. So if you don't want your bug net on, you can actually kind of um, pull it all the way through your hammock through that four inch hole up there. So don't sew it all the way to the very top. All right, so I did the, um, the diagonal sewing down there and I forgot to mention on one of them, so I'm going to do this on the other side as well. On one of them, when you come down to the open, so this is where the op this, both sides are open, the other side is where it's sewed together already, uh, the long side, you want to leave about an inch, you know, stop about an inch short because we're going to make a channel there. On the other side, you can sew it all the way down. So that's where, you know, it doesn't have to be so perfect all the time, but uh, so now I'm just going to, I'm just going to trim um, along, up along the side of where I just sewed. And what's real nice, you get all this extra and you can make hanging bags, you can do a lot with this, with, with all the extra that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and, and trim that up on this side and uh, sew the other side. Then we'll do the channel next. All right, so now we need to make a channel on the bottom. So this is the, so where the diagonals came in, so this is the narrower end. So where the, the narrow end is where we're going to put the channel because we're going to be running shock cord in here. So this is the side where we left it about an inch short. And we put that basically around. We're not going to be sewing the two sides together, just going to be making a channel. So make sure you're not sewing the two sides together. I'm going to fold that over. It's going to be about an inch because that's what you left. We're going to sew it all the way around and we'll put the shock cord in. Got the whole channel uh, sewn and so now what we need to do is turn it all inside out. So all your seams now are on the, in, or your hems are on the inside and I'll turn it inside out. Cool. And find our channel end. Now it's on the inside. So I got here, right here. So this um, is shock cord. So it's bouncy. And I um, can't remember how much I got. You know, you can get, you're not going to need all this because you're going to be scrunching it all up. So, but it's about eight inch, eighth inch, I think. And, um, it's basically what you, like if you're going to repair your tent poles, then you just, you're just going to shove it on through. It's not nothing too hard. And it'll go all the way around and then I've got a piece of, uh, got a line lock that I think I scavenged off of some old pack or something like that. So, or stuff bag that died. So, um, we string this on through and then we'll take it out and set it up on the hammock. We got the bug net all done, so we will string the hammock through. We'll find that. Upper holes. There. So that was the smaller of the two holes. Now we will string the other side.
and we'll tighten the hammock back up. Now, we'll figure out how much to bunch the bottom to begin with. Now I'm just going to put a line lock on it. Okay, now we just get in, and the idea is that you fill out the hammock and it covers up the hole so no bugs can get in. Deal. Tighten that up just a little bit more. That's it. So this can be slid back. You know, out of the way if you want it out of the way. Close off the ends, you could just that one's pretty tight, but you could just tie a little piece of string, close it off. So there you go. Uh, bug net, ridge line, whoopie slings, camel hammock, all done, off to Jeep. And uh we're gonna put the link to the guy that I learned this from, Frankie, and uh make it your own, it's a good time. Talk to you later.